Hello everyone, welcome to this SML tutorial series. This is the first part of the series on the SML technology. In this part of the SML tutorial series, we are going to be looking at some topics and they include what is SML, what is SML used for, some tools that are used for SML, how to write SML, how to validate SML documents, and we will do some practical SML tasks at the end of it. Let's begin by explaining what SML is. What is SML actually? Well, SML stands for Extensible Markup Language. It is a simple test-based format for representing structured information. This information can be documents, data, configuration of software, books, transactions, invoices, and a lot more. SML was derived from an older standard format called SGML in order to be more suitable for web use. SGML stands for Standard Generalized Markup Language. SML has a deep root in the publishing industry. SGML was widely used in the publishing industry before SML was developed. SML was developed by the World Wide Web Consortium, that is the W3C. The first version of SML was released in 1998 as a recommendation of the W3C. The development of SML started around 1996, but the first version was released in 1998 as a recommendation of the W3C. It is very important to understand that SML works with other technologies. For example, SMS schema, SSLT, SPAT, SQuery, and a lot more. What is SML used for? SML is used for data sharing. SML is one of the most widely used formats for sharing structured information today. That could be between programs, between people, between computers and people, both locally and across networks. That is according to W3C.org. Which is true because SML is actually used for sharing data between multiple devices. SML is an integral part of every web application. For example, every layout in Android mobile application is created in SML. It is used for storing configuration data. SML is used to store the data that is used to configure an application. As a programmer, no matter what programming language you are using, you have to know SML. SML on its own is not a programming language. However, it works with many other SML related technologies and other programming languages. Let's continue with what is SML used for. SML is widely used in the publishing, computing, mobile, and virtually every industry, whether it's a small or an enterprise application. A lot of applications on different platforms store, configure, process, and share data in SML formats. SML is widely used across the World Wide Web, Internet technologies and networks. It is interesting to know that the Microsoft Office package is SML based format file extensions. That has been the case since Office 2007 was released. For example, in Office application, we have the .docs the .pptS, the .slss file extensions. 
as a matter of fact, the S in the FAR extension stands for SML. SML is used extensively with HTML, web development, software engineering, game development, mobile devices, especially Android development, databases, servers, and so on. A combination of HTML and SML gave birth to SHTML. SML is used today in most business-to-business -business solutions, and it is used extensively by computer programmers and information specialists. In terms of developing SML or writing SML applications, there are some tools that you need. Some of these tools include Notepad, Notepad++, VS Code, Eclipse, Visual Studio Code, and so on. You can use any of these tools to write your SML document. There are some standalone and online applications that we can use in the process of writing and validating SML. The W3C Online SML Validator tool can be found on this link. We will visit it at some point later on on this course. The SML Formatter is another online tool that we can access through this URL. The Oxygen SML Editor is a powerful SML editing tool. It is not free. However, there is a free trial version of it, which lasts for 30 days. In other words, you can get a 30-day free trial version for the Oxygen SML Editor, and you can download it from this link. Web browsers are very useful too in terms of writing and validating SML. In this tutorial series, we will particularly be using the Microsoft Edge web browser. The SML documents you will be working with will follow some structures. For example, this could be a particular structure for an SML document. An SML document takes a prologue that includes the document declaration type. In this case, we use the less than symbol question mark SML to declare that this is an SML document. And we also close it with a question mark. Here we have version equals double quote 1.0 double quote. What that means is this is an attribute and it shows that it is a version of SML that is 1.0. We can also add another attribute to it. For example, standalone equals yes. This means that this application or this document is on its own. The encoding equals UTF-8. That means this document uses UTF-8. I will say more about UTF-8 later. The SML has a root. SML tags or elements are case sensitive and they take an opening tag and a closing tag or a self-closing tag. There is the use of attributes in SML and they appear in double quotation marks. There are no limits for it. In this case here, we have three attributes in this prologue. Version, standalone, and encoding. I will say more about this later on. SML document needs to be well formed. Elements inside an SML document can be nested, but they need to be nested correctly. Elements in an SML document can have a start tag, an end tag, or it can be self-closing. Entity reference, such as less than, greater than, copy, for, and so on, copyright can also be used in an SML document. I will say more about this later on. Comments are allowed in SML. For example, this is a comment, I love SML. SML uses a white spaces and an SML document needs to be valid. So these are some of the structures that an SML document follows. We can use attributes in SML. Elements in an SML document can have attributes. An element can have zero or more attributes that describes it. Attributes are often used when the attribute is not part of the SML document, textual data set. 
or when it is plain difficult not to use attributes. Store data as individual elements and metadata as attributes. There are, however, some issues with attributes. Elements help to define structure and attributes do not. Attributes are not allowed to have multiple values, whereas elements can do so. We need to understand that programming is more complex using attributes, and attributes are more difficult to alter in SMS documents at a later stage. Attributes are not expansion friendly. I will see more of these later on. Metadata, what is it? Well, metadata is simply the data about data. That's interesting, but let's go deeper to know what exactly it is. For example, in a database environment, the names of students and the information about them is the data. Why the metadata is the tables you define which are used to hold or store records in the student courses etc tables as for sml and html metadata is the element or tags contained within a document or web page the values between the tags is the actual data here is an example student erica jones student so the sml metadata here is the student why Erica Jung is the actual data. SML in many languages. Here we are looking at Unicode attribute as encoding equals UTF-8. UTF-8 is what we are using here as the value for the encoding attribute. The process to store SML documents in languages that are not English language requires some characters that are not used in the English language. These characters are encoded if not stored in Unicode. UTF stands for Unicode Transformation Format. So wherever we say here UTF-8, we are actually talking about Unicode Transformation Format 8. It could also be Unicode transformation format 16, but here we are specifically saying Unicode 8. And here is a prologue for an SML document. Here we declare that it's an SML document and the version is 1.0. We are encoding UTF-8. This is for the SML parser, that is the processor. HTML and SML, well, HTML creates web pages with fixed data and metadata. While SML allows one to create web pages with adaptable data and metadata content. HTML on its own stands for Hypertext Markup Language and its tags are predefined. While SML on the other hand stands for Extensible Markup Language. SML is extensible because each metadata set, that is set of tags is completely dynamic and can be extended. The fact that it can be extended means it is extensible and that is where the word extensible comes in in the name extensible markup language. Now here is an SML document. Here we have an example of an SML document. This is a valid SML document. Here is the prologue SML version 1.0 encoding UTF-8 and it is for countries. Countries is the root level element. Capital and currency here are attributes and these are the values. While the name here, for example, Nigeria is the element content. So let's take a closer look of this document here. The prologue SML declaration and Unicode encoding attribute starts here. And this is what we have here. The root level element is countries. This is the opening tag and this is the closing tag for the root level element. Here, attribute, capital, and values. 
here capital is an attribute and abuja is a value and here currency is an attribute naira is the value for that attribute here nigeria is the country element content here we have an opening tag for the country element and here we have a closing tag for the country element that is opening and closing tags for the country element the country element could have been written this way that is country japan country in other words element with no attributes while here country capital tokyo currency yen japan country this is an element with attributes in an sml document elements can be nested but it is important to know that nesting elements means nesting them correctly sml requires elements in a document to be nested correctly for it to be a well-formed document now let's look at this part of this sml document wrong nesting the nesting for this sml document is wrong here we have the prologue the sml version and the encoding the root level element is media here we have social media facebook this is the opening tag and this is the closing tag which is fine twitter this is the opening tag but there is no closing tag for it linkedin this is the opening tag and there is no closing tag for it here we have instagram this is the opening tag and this is the closing tag now we have twitter closing tag linkedin closing tag so this sml document is not nested correctly and if we try to validate this sml document we will get some error messages one end tag name twitter does not match the current start tag name linkedin which is obvious here two end tag name linkedin does not match the current start tag name twitter and three the element type linkedin must be terminated by the matching end tag linkedin so to correct it we need to nest it this way this is the correct nesting for this document media social media facebook opening tag closing tag twitter opening tag closing tag linkedin opening tag closing tag instagram this is the opening tag and this is the closing tag so this document is well nested and it is a well-formed sml document sml elements three level this can include parent child ancestor descendant and sibling and we will look at each and every one of them closely siblings in an sml document are elements that are on the same level of the tree and with same parent so in this case now the sml declaration or the prologue is this first line here it is usually the very first line in your sml document at the top in some cases you can omit it but it is advisable that you add it because sml also works with other related technologies by declaring the sml prologue you will be able to differentiate your sml document from other documents in your project so media this is the root node that is the parent element it opens here and usually it should be the closing one so siblings social media and print media uh, social media here and print media they are siblings they are on the same level of the tree and they have the same parents why facebook twitter linkedin and instagram are all children of social media social media here has 
an attribute which is tab equals digital. Here, book, newspaper, magazines are children of print media. So, book, newspaper, and magazine are children of print media. Print media also has an attribute type and is print. And here we have the media, which is the root level element, and this is the closing tag for the root level element. Here, magazine is a self-closing element. Magazine is a child of print media. It is a self-closing element here because we have not actually added anything to it. If we were going to add something to it, it would have a start tag and an end tag. Because we are not adding anything to it at the moment, that is why it is just a self-closing tag. Well, here, title and author are children of the book element. Name and publisher are children of the newspaper element. Let's look at more examples in this regard. SMA elements, three level, parent, child, ancestor, descendant, and sibling continued. This is the same SMA document that we just saw in the previous slide. The root node parent element is media. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn are siblings of Instagram. There is a saying in the world of SML that there are no brothers and sisters. Good news, we have siblings. So Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn are siblings of Instagram. Here, social media has four children or four child elements, which are Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. In this part of the document, book, title, author, newspaper, name, publisher, and magazine are all descendants of print media. And here, media, social media, print media, book, newspaper are ancestors of the publisher element. So these are all ancestors to the publisher element here. The same thing here, media, social media are ancestors to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. An SMS document needs to be a well-formed document. An SML has naming rules or convention. Here are some rules for naming SML elements. It is important to know that SML element names are case sensitive. Element names start with a letter or underscore. Element name can have letters, numbers, underscore full stops or hyphen but with no space in between them. Element names cannot start with SML, whether it's lowercase, uppercase or miss case. SML seems to be a reserved keyword for SML. Element name must have opening and closing tags or it can be a self-closing tag. Comments are allowed before in the body or below the closing root element tag. Some of what we have here have been applied to this SML document. In this case, this very one in the middle shows that this SML document is not well formed. It has violated some of these rules. For example, here, this is a comment, timetable.sml file, which is correct. Here, the opening element tag name is all lowercase, but in this case, it starts with capital N, which means it is wrong. Here, teacher starts with capital T, and here, the closing tag has lowercase t. It is wrong. Here, this is the root level element timetable. And this is the closing tag for the root 
node timetable below the closing tab timetable we have some comments that is correct this sml document is the correct version of this this one is well formed why this one is not well formed like i mentioned earlier sml is case sensitive here is another sml document this is the prologue the sml document declaration including the version of sml and the encoding utf8 the root level element is markup languages here language sml language this is correct language html language wrong case mismatch everything here is lower case for the start tag while here the case is missed with capital g it is wrong case mismatch language math ml language correct language sgml language correct language kml the closing tag capital l is wrong case mismatch here again language shtml language the opening tag here is capital l while the closing tag here has lowercase l also wrong because of case mismatch here this is the correct version for this sml document this is well formed because the opening tag and the closing tag are the same they are all lowercase it is important to talk about references in sml that is entity references this is an sml document this is the prologue the sml declaration but here we have messages and some elements within the messages tag info if quantity is less than 100 or quantity is greater than 1000 do not authorize sale info expect delivery today from bazaar and sons limited there are some characters here which i have highlighted in red this one is less than or left angle bracket and this one is the greater than symbol or the right angle bracket this one here is the and or upper and sml does not accept these characters to be entered this way if you enter these characters this way the sml document will fail validation it will be invalid it won't be well formed so a way to go around to avoid the mistakes that the sml parser will display because of these characters so the less than symbol is referred as ampersand lt and semicolon that is ampersand lt and a semicolon the greater than is referenced as ampersand g t semicolon in other words ampersand g t and the semicolon and the ampersand or ampersand is referenced as amp that is ampersand symbol amp and a semicolon amp here is an abbreviation for ampersand then the double quotes is referenced as ampersand quote semicolon again that is ampersand quote and a semicolon why the apostrophe is referenced as ampersand apos and the semicolon that is ampersand apos and a semicolon references character and entity references here are some examples of sml character reference character reference this reference here means space this one here means line fed this one means carriage return this one means tab while this one means vertical line or a vertical bar as for the sml entity reference here are some examples this entity reference means upper sand this one here means less than 
Or how this one means greater than. This one means Apos, which is apostrophe or single quote. This one means quote or double quote. In SML, predefined entity references are useful for escaping characters that have special meaning in SML syntax. The function of the markup in an SML document is to describe its storage and logical structure and to associate attribute name value pairs with its logical structures. This is from the W3C SML specification. Now, let's do some practical SML tasks. We will write an SML document and validate our SML document with different tools. But before we do that, kindly take a minute and subscribe to this channel. All right, now we are going to create our SML document. This is going to be a practical task, and there are some tasks that we are going to carry out. We will learn how to write an SML document. We will learn how to format an SML document, and we also look at ways to validate SML documents. Normally, we can create an SML document with a simple text editor, such as notepad on windows test edit on mac or linux we can also use some applications to save a file as an sml document there are some online tools that one can also use to create an sml document but one would need to be connected to the internet to be able to use those online tools for this tutorial we will use Notepad to create our first SML document. And we will use some other sophisticated tools later on on this SML series. After creating our SML document, we will use a web browser to view it. Now I will open Notepad for us to create our SML document. You can also use Notepad++ or any test editor that you are comfortable with to do this. Now I have Notepad open. You can use Notepad++ or any other text editor that you are happy with. I am going to type in some SML code. SML version equals double speech man, double speech man, 1.0. And coding equals double switch mark, double switch mark, UTF hyphen eight. That means it's going to be SML version one point zero and coding UTF eight. I am particularly using UTF eight, which is Unicode transformation format. Some SML documents you will find a different format, for example, ISO format. Our SML document is going to be for people and the staff of a company. People. We'll close it. People. Now we create a staff here. Staff. First name, first name, first name, Leona, last name, Gave, last name, Gave. Location, close location. New York. Now we can close staff. 
Now let's add an attribute to it for department. Marketing. Okay, now this is our first element, star, first name, last name, location. Then we close staff here. Now to add another staff, I will copy this one. Now paste it here. Let's change the values. Change this one to IT. Change this name to Elliot. Ray for last name. Location London. Let's add a few more. I will see paste in the one I copied before. Now let's change the value. HR for the department. First name. Marlene. Last name. Jonas. Location. Beijing. So we have three staff now inside our people SMR. Now I am going to add suppliers to it. Suppliers, close it. Suppliers. Now let's add a supplier. Close this one here. Company name. Rudolph Electronics. Product. Close product. What kind of product do they supply? Electronic gadgets. So inside our supplier, now we have a supplier. Let's copy it and paste another one there. And I'm going to change the name. Let's change the name of this company to AAC. All about computers. Product. Computers. So that's fine. Let's tidy it up a little bit so that we go through it together. It is a bit long. So this is our ASML document. People, staff, and suppliers. Now let's save it. The reason I use Notepad is for us to be able to type it up ourselves so that we know how to actually format our SML properly. Now I have a folder on my desktop which I named all about SML and I am going to save this SML file inside that folder. I will go to File, Save As, and now I'm going to save it inside the folder all about SML. And I will name it people.sml. Your SML file should end with .sml. Save it. Now I have a file inside my folder and I'm going to open it. Yes people.sml. At the moment, it is just an SML document. To be able to view it, we can use a web browser or we can use it with an application. In this case, I am going to use a web browser to open it. I am going to open it with the Microsoft Edge browser. It is one of the best web browsers that you can use for SML. You can also use other web browsers but I will be using the Microsoft Edge web browser. Alright, click on it. Open with. 
Microsoft Edge. Great. Now this is our SML document, just the way we structured it. You can collapse it or expand it. What we have here now shows the SML document tree and everything was entered correctly. If we made any mistake, it would display the error message. If we make any mistake, for example, we will see an error message. Let's make a deliberate mistake. I will open the file again. For example here, staff, department, IT, first name, Elliot, first name. I am going to change the uppercase N here now to lowercase N so that this one is in camera case form while this one is all lowercase. I'm going to save it and let's refresh our SML page. Exactly. Now it says this page contains the following errors. Error on line 9 at column 31. Opening and ending tag mismatch. First name, line 9, and first name. Now it's camera case and all lower case. Below is a rendering of the page up to the first error. This is one good thing about the Microsoft Edge browser. It will render your SML document correctly until it gets to the first error message. Here now, Leona, which is our first staff, is displayed correctly. As this one here, the first staff, Leona, is displayed correctly. The problem is here, so it stopped displaying from here. I am going to change it to what it was before. Now save it. Let's run it again. Great. So this is how you use the Microsoft Edge web browser to check your SML document. Like I said earlier, you can use Notepad, Notepad++, or any text editor to write SML. Now let's look at some online tools that we can use to format and validate our SML document. to duplicate this tab go to Google open Google type in here codebeauty.org sml okay and let's look at codebeautify.org sml sml via codebeautify click on it and now we have this sml viewer page this is an online tool. Here you can paste your SML. You can browse to load it in, or you can use your URL. Now let's browse for our SML file. This is our SML file, people.sml. Open it. Great. Now our SML file has been loaded to their platform. And here it shows the tree structure of our SML. This is the SML tree view. At the moment, it doesn't look readable, so we can format it. Click on beautify forward slash format. Great. Now this looks more readable. You can download it, you can export it to CSV or do whatever you like to do to it on their platform. So this is codebeautify.org, SML view. Let's look at another online tool. I will duplicate this tab. Once again, let's go to Google. Google.com. Type in here, JS, JSON formatter. Yes. We have here jsinformata.org. Click on it. This is jsinformata.org forward slash SML hyphen formata. So we can also format our SML document with it. 
we can type our SML code here or load SML from our computer or from a website. I'm going to click on load data, enter the URL if you are going to point to your SML in a different uh, URL location or you upload file. I'm going to upload file. This is our SML document, people.sml, open. Great. Now our SML document is open and it is formatted here. Let's view the SML tree. One, that is we have one file which we uploaded people we have two child element for people I click on staff shows here we have three staff and four means they have four elements each for example here now we have first name which is one last name two location three department which is an attribute four that is why we are having four here they are three and it starts counting from zero. One, two, three. Then suppliers is also one element with two child elements. Supplier one, Rudolph Electronics and AAC, all about computers. So this one gives a detailed view of the SML tree. There are some other things you can do to the SML document here if you want. There are a few other ones. Let's look at one or two more. I will duplicate this page. Let's go to Google, google.com. Type in a free formatter. This result will come up, www.freeformatter.com. Click on this first one. Now here you can click on this one here, SML formatter. Great. Here you can paste your SML file or you type it up. And here you have the choice of selecting Unicode 8 or any other format. Like I mentioned earlier, there are some other ones you can use, for example, ISO and so on, or UTF-16, but let's stick to UTF-8. If you look at our file here, we actually entered UTF-8. So now it says option two, upload your SML. Let's upload our SML. People.sml, open. You can format SML or format SML to new window. Here I'm going to click on format SML. Great. This is our SML now, which is well formatted. We can copy it or save it. So this is how you use the freeformatter.com for SML. There are so many other things that you can do with it. We will come to this one in another video. I am going to duplicate this page again. Now let's go to Google and do one more. Google.com. Type here SML validator. And the first link here, click on it. Validate SML files. And this page will open. SML validation. There are instructions here on how to validate your SML. But here it says, please copy your SML document in here. You can copy and paste it here or you upload it. To upload it, click on choose file. Click on this one. Now open it. Yes, people.sml is uploaded. Now let's validate it. Click on validate. And it says here no errors were found. 
and this is our SML document. So click on it. And we have our SML file here. So everything was structured correctly. For example, if I deliberately now remove location, delete it, ready, it is showing some error messages. Let's validate it. And here is the error. So it's pointing me to this place now that before the staff, we did not close location. So this is how you use online tools to validate your SML document. In this tutorial, we have looked at how to write an SML document and how to validate an SML document using the Microsoft Windows Edge web browser as well as some online tools. In my next video, we will do more with SML. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to this channel, subscribe. And when you subscribe, click on the notification bell so that each time I upload a new video, YouTube will notify you. See you in my next video. Bye for now.